What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So last week we talked a little bit about creating a floor plan from scratch. Um, this week we're going to talk about creating a floor plan in SketchUp when you have a floor plan image. So when you want to bring a picture in of a floor plan and uh, model it in 3D. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And so now what we're going to do, so the other thing you can do is you can import an image into SketchUp. So you can go to File, Import. And then if you have a floor plan image, so if you have a floor plan image in here, like this image that I have right here that's a floor plan, uh, you can bring that into your model. And to do that, what you're gonna do is, first of all, make sure this little box labeled image is checked. So you don't want texture or match photo checked at this point. You want use image as image checked. And then you can just double click on your image that you wanna bring in. So, and you can see what that does is that brings that in and you can move your mouse around you can move your mouse around in order to set your first corner point. And then once you click once to set your first corner point, you're gonna click again to set your second one. And uh, you can generally, if you look kind of in the corner, it's showing you the dimensions of the height. So you can kind of get this close to the right, you can get this close to the right dimensions in here by doing that. But what we're gonna do now is we're, we're gonna want this to be to scale. So you, you always want, if possible, you want floor plans and stuff like that to be to scale because you may want to come in here and measure the distance between here and the end of this counter or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside. So you're going to have to explode this image. So once you explode this image, then you can come in here and you're going to go inside your image and actually set this to scale. And to do that, we're going to use the tape measure tool. So the tape measure tool, you can see it says that you can measure distances and create guidelines. Well, the other thing you can do with the tape measure tool is you can use it to set the scale in your model. So like, for example, I've got this wall right here that's 38 feet, 7 inches, right? So if I come in here and I measure from here, to here, you're not going to want that in guide mode. So there we go. So if I come in here and I measure that, you can see it tells me it's only 12 feet long. So what you can do now is you can actually type in the dimension or the length that you want that to be. So it says it's 12 feet long, but I can come in here and type 38 foot 7 inches and hit the enter key. And then you see what it asks me is, do I want to resize the model? Well, basically what that means is it's asking me if I want to resize everything in the model so that that is the new scale. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, and you can see how that blew everything up. So now if I come in here and I measure this, right, from this point to this point, that length should be very close to 38 feet, 7 inches. And it is, you can see it shows up as 38 feet, 7 and a quarter inches, which is perfect. So now this image is to scale. So now everything that I draw is going to actually be to scale. So when you bring your image in and you explode it, it's going to make it so this is already a face as far as SketchUp is concerned. So if you were to bring this in, like for example, if I imported it, I double clicked here, I created this image and then I started drawing on it. What it would do is it would draw a face on top of all this and you wouldn't be able to see everything, right? Which gets really annoying because then you have to go in there and delete delete faces and everything else. And then every time you draw a line, it's going to heal everything. It gets really annoying. But since we exploded that, this is already in here as a face. So you can draw on top of it without it drawing a face on top of everything. So you can draw your lines without it healing a face on top of everything. So it's really kind of convenient and uh, important that you have this exploded. So if you click on this and there's just a blue border around it, instead of this being filled in like this, um, just right click on your image and click explode. And that will make this into an actual image that you're drawing on top of. So what you can do to start roughing out your spaces. So first of all, if you want to be super precise with your walls, just like this, like if you really need this wall to be exactly one foot six, you can come in here and you can draw some guides off of here. And probably you could just use the guides function of the tape measure tool actually. And if you use a guide, then you can come in here and 
rough everything out exactly with kind of a grid um, and you're, you're definitely welcome to do that it does take a little bit longer but if you're really serious about getting down to the inch in these rooms in this model then that's probably the best way to do that um, for what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna kind of trace over the outside of these a little bit so first of all you can start off and you can use the offset tool to create that perimeter again and that may not always be right like you can see if I do this offset here this wall is a little thinner but you can create that kind of perimeter around here and then come in here and clean it up so like over here you know you can move this you can move this line over so that it actually matches because when, when you're doing this in an image you're more tracing than you are actually coming in here and modeling it so you you can use that to create kind of your perimeter and don't worry about your colors right now we'll come back in here and fix those in a little bit but see so you can offset for your perimeter and then you can come in here and you can use the rectangle tool if you want to start roughing out these rooms so you can just kind of draw them this way you may want to come in here when you do this and draw some lines as kind of guides just so everything is doing just so you have some stuff for things to lock to and then you can come in here and you can erase these lines so this is all kind of a uniform piece but it is going to be faster if you come in here with the rectangle tool and do some of this stuff so you can also come through here and trace everything just by drawing lines just like this so if you want to do it that way you can definitely do that so there's there's several different ways that you can do this and it's all kind of personal preference type stuff um, so if you, if you like doing this with rectangles then you can do it with rectangles if you like doing it by just drawing over top of the lines you can do that as well um, I usually end up doing kind of a combination of the two and a lot of it just kind of depends on how big of a hurry I'm in so because rectangles are a really fast way to do this but they're a little less uh, they're a little less precise I think sometimes so but if I'm just coming through and I'm just trying to knock this out really fast then I'm just gonna draw rectangles over all these walls and then kind of use everything you know as as I'll use the lines that I create as kind of inferences to make sure everything's lined up and just kind of go from there so that that is the one the one kind of trick that you need to make sure that you're following when you're doing this is make sure you're always drawing your lines along the red and green axes and you see you see how right here this doesn't exactly line up so that can create a little bit of a problem so probably what I would do in this case is I would just erase these guys out and then just draw this along the green green axis all the way to the wall here so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and trace the rest of these and then I'll get back to you with the next part of this tutorial so one other trick you can use when you're doing this because I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing where my lines stop is you can use the materials tool and uh, you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and fill this in with the default material just like this because what I'm trying to figure out is I've got some lines in here that um, or I've got some uh, yeah I've got some lines in here that aren't closing so if I use the default material in here I can see kind of I can see kind of which faces that's doing that on and then kind of go from there and then you can undo it in order to take it back to the material that it was All right, so one of the things that you will have to do when you're um, when you're tracing something like this is you will probably have to come in here and kind of clean some stuff up and make sure that all your faces work the way that you want them to work. But once you kind of get this in here and um, you get everything kind of the way that you want it to be, what you can do is you can come in here and fill this in. Uh, I might fill it in with like a gray color or something like that, just something that looks a little bit different but you can see now I've got all my walls roughed out in here so now you can come in here and if you want you can kind of clean some of these up so that they're more in uninterrupted faces um, as long as as long as when you push pull this everything kind of push pulls its way all the way up it's not that big of a deal um, but you can come in here and clean that stuff up if you want to 
So then the next thing we're gonna do, just like we talked about before, is we're gonna use the push-pull tool to um, extrude these walls up. So at this point, we're basically doing the exact same thing that we did. We're doing the exact same thing that we did with our, uh, with our model when we didn't have an image. So now you can come in here and the nice thing about this is it's got the little door swings in here still so you can see where your doors were so you can come in here and just use the uh, you can just use the rectangle tool to come in here based on how wide these doors are and uh, you can basically just draw these in now so you would draw this one in as two foot six comma seven foot push pull that through the wall And if for whatever reason this isn't working, um, if it push pulls all the way through the wall like this, uh, just move your mouse up to um, a point that's on the back side of the wall. Uh, that'll give it kind of a reference point so that it knows to go exactly the back side of the wall and um, cut your door opening. So you can come in here, in this case, this looks like a four foot by seven foot, and just do the same thing. Just come in here and model all your different doors. You know, the one thing that may be a little problematic for you if you came in here and you didn't make these walls exactly the right thickness is you can't do the double click thing that we were doing before with the doors. So, because the walls aren't all exactly the same thickness. So that is something to think about when you're coming in here and modeling all of this is you will have to actually push pull things to the back side of whatever your wall is you can't do the double click and just do the same thing over and over again because your wall thicknesses aren't uniform all right perfect so now we've got everything kind of in here and uh, we've got all our doors and stuff like that modeled. And the nice thing about doing this this way is if you look right here, you've actually got your image in the background. So you can actually go to a plan view and look down and everything's labeled because of the way the floor was in here. So the nice thing about this is one thing you may want to be able to do is you may want to be able to come in or you may want to be able to come in here and turn your 3D geometry off and just take a look at your floor plan with the walls and everything else. And uh, so that can get a little tricky because we drew actually on this face like this. But what you can do is now that you have your image to scale and everything else, you can just import another copy of the image on top of that. So if you if I go in here and I click on this endpoint and then I click on this corner point, what that did basically is that brings in a copy of that image just like this and it merges or it doesn't merge because it's a group. So now what you can do is you can take that image by clicking on it and uh, you can create a layer in here. So if you go to your default tray and you go over to layers, you can click image and then you can move that image over to image and then you can turn it off and then what you can do is you can take all this other geometry and you can create a new layer called 3d geometry and put it on your on its own layer so if i come in here and maybe the best way to do this is to put it in a group so drag your mouse across it put it in a group and then uh, go ahead and select 3d geometry and then you can turn that layer off you can turn your image layer on. So in that way, you've got a copy of your image that shows all of your walls and everything else. Then you've also got a little checkbox over here that you can check to turn your actual 3D geometry on just like this. So you can move back and forth really easily by doing that. So just another quick tip for, um, you know, it's, it's always nice to be able to flip back and forth. Sometimes you're gonna wanna see these doors. Sometimes you're gonna wanna see these walls and these windows and everything else. And this will definitely allow you to do that. Uh, you could definitely come in here, pop a roof on this guy and uh, make this like a complete 3D model that has all the windows and everything else if you wanted to. So that's one way you could do that. Or if you're just looking for some interior stuff, you could come in here and you could use 3D warehouse models of refrigerators and everything else to kind of lay these spaces out and everything like that so it really gives you a whole lot of options
So if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, um, make sure you click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's a dollar a month. Um, that's just a way you can support me and help me keep help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. So in any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.